the topic today, believe it or not, is going to be focusing on mid-game. A general, uh, generally speaking, when we think about uh, mid-game, we kind of have this really, really lovely idea in our head. We have this idea that all of our groups are going to be strong, and our opponent is going to, of course, uh, do the best thing possible, which is have two or three weak groups, all of his own, that we can, you know, punch around at will. Something is going to die, and we're going to win the game, and everyone's going to be happy. But what happens when your opponent is stubborn and doesn't have two or three weak groups for you to punch around? What happens when every group on the board, for example, is a pretty strong group? Nothing we can really uh, punch around and get running around so we can you know, make this massive profit or these massive kills. The question then becomes, what do we do? Do we just say, okay, I have no idea what to do anymore, and just resign the game and move on to the next one? Uh, could do that, could do that. Mildly interested to see how, what rank you can actually uh, get if you do that. That'd be, ah, uh, that'd be totally sandbagging, otherwise I might act, no, we're not doing that. Suffice to say, what happens at that point? Uh, Defunct has the wrong idea. That is not when endgame begins. Midgame can actually be when everyone's groups are okay, and nothing has really happened on the board yet. And that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. What happens when our, we just don't have those annoying weak groups to go and kill? What do we do then? So, to that end, I've got a couple of games here I want to go over. I may be blitzing through some of these faster than others as a result. Uh, let's just go ahead and throw these people up uh, really, really carefully. Or not carefully, quickly, I meant to say. Quickly and carefully, there we go. Ha, saved it. Uh, Young Hun versus... Versus who? Who are you versus? You are versus Kim... I don't know what your name is. There we go. So we've got so we've got a nice little game here, and we're gonna find out what happens when we don't have any weak groups to go after. So as everything I go over, we of course have this nice. Yes, it is. This one's uh, recent. Next one I'm going over is not recent, but it's the same general idea. So the question is, what happens here? Nice little normal opening out of everyone. We've got some three fours, so if we get if we approach and get pincered, maybe a fight will break out. Black says we're gonna go for territory. Okay, we can, but we can still get into some good fighting from a territorial game. So white approaches, we get into territory again. Okay, that's fine. We can uh, still work on that. We can, for example, play this Jiseki, which we are going to do. Leave the weakness behind. Maybe Black will attack it, and then we'll have a fight barreling down from there. So we still might see some fighting this game. Instead, Black approaches on the inside. Why the inside? Simply because... Let's get my handy-dandy little tool here, and we can see that... Building up from here, possible. We could do it if we wanted to. Get into a uh, more framework, influence-oriented kind of day, uh, game. Probably wouldn't approach from this side because all of those stones are on the third line. Can't really expand outwards very well from the third line. Probably not going to happen that way. Or we can just say we're going to try to split up white and make sure he doesn't get a framework. Black says we're going to do the latter because... I've got territory, if I prevent him from getting influence, then this game must be going my way. So white backs off, black chooses to settle, and white doesn't do anything clever here. He doesn't try to attack us, he doesn't try to pincer us, thus maybe going back down that road of, uh, you know, kind of more aggressive games. No, 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 white just... Took his corner, easy peasy, allowing uh, black to settle with a nice normal base. 
So, so far, if we're an aggressive player, we are still seeing really no really good ways to uh, capitalize on that aggression. Can't Don't really see any nice fights that we can actually start here. But, White's move. He decides to take away Black's uh, extension. Black approaches. No point pincering that. Bottom held nothing for white, so white backs off again. Black makes himself super duper strong. That's about the strongest bottom side of the board you can ever hope to get. I mean, there's no invasion points. Nothing to really uh, go around there and punch around. So now, as white, we have a question. We can go and look through all of those absolutely wonderful lists that everyone has, like, all right, I'm going to examine for x y and z such as where are the weak groups there are none okay um are my groups weak no they aren't okay there's that uh where are the large points on the board <laughs> got me um that's a really great question too uh, unfortunately the right hand side's not really a large point because we'll be extending from a low stone just as black will so it's kind of this uninteresting area right now for both parties um, so what do we do what do we do we're clearly in mid game we clearly have nothing that we can fight so what the frack do we do now where do we go from this Tengen 10 points from Gryffindor sorry Kalen not gonna work uh, let's see, we've got other options. We could do C14 and expand. Alright, we could help our stone, I guess. Uh, a bit more of a passive idea, but I mean, it strengthens something, so that's gotta be worth something, I guess. That's true, true, true. Uh, what else do we have? B16. B16 is what? Okay, it's kind of a similar idea. Let's just like attach to the stone and see if we can get stronger. Tengen, just put him in the corner by himself for the rest of the game. Uh, J15, again, we can, there's like a kind of a weak point on the top of the board. We can strengthen that, I guess. But essentially the uh, common theme that I'm seeing from a lot of you guys is let's just find the weakest thing on the board and make it stronger, right? Uh, someone said, uh, Stepwise said H4, I guess like the only thing we can do is try and expand this area out maybe. But predominantly a lot of you are looking to just strengthen the weakest thing you can find. White comes up with an interesting idea. Nothing on this board can really be attacked. There's no real awesome ways to expand what we have. We're low everywhere. Everyone is uh, going for territory. So he decides to play here. It is a forcing move in the sense that if black does not respond, he's going to get sliced. And if he gets sliced, then we get an attack. And if we have an attack, then we're happy. So please, dear god, black, go elsewhere. That would make us happy. Instead, black responds, but black responds by connecting, so this might actually make white stronger. And the fact that black did respond gives us sente again. So black continues the idea mentioned earlier with uh, h4, is to keep expanding. And again, we don't want to be sliced, so we're going to respond. And similarly, we don't. Uh, since we've responded, we give Sente to our opponent again, which he uses to connect up. Now, is are these stones strong? Is this a really, really strong wall that White's created? No, clearly not. There is. This is in no way a nice, strong wall that gives white uh, awesome thickness. I mean, there's there's defects with it, but defects aren't bad. I mean, if black wants to fight us now, then great. 
we have a fight breaking out. When a fight breaks out, um, everything can change. There's just like infinite possibilities when that happens. Um, is B ex is white uh, getting to expand here as well? Yes, he is clearly off a low stone, not the greatest in the world, but he is still expanding. So in lieu of finding something really, really nice to attack, he's finding the only thing that he can actually keep low. And thus we see that here, and here, and here. Why did black play at k4? Was there a better move? Uh, not really. I mean, you've got only a couple of different uh, options here available to you, right? You can play here, you can play here, and you can play here. Nothing else really strikes us as what we can do. Otherwise, we're going to be playing elsewhere, and if we play elsewhere, that allows uh, white the potential to come in and thus fight these stones, which would make white really, really happy. So no, black had to defend, which gave white sente over and over and over again. Black plays another defensive move, but this is also keeping white rather weak. He's not going to get any forcey moves, not going to be able to protect any of his cut points that he's currently got on the board, unless he does it now in Gote. But white is not going to do that, and he finally expands. So what he was looking for throughout all of this, throughout all of this, is uh, forcing moves before giving up Sente. The board's nice and open. We can't uh, attack anything. Expanding, not really uh, that attractive an idea either. So what we can do is get some influence for ourselves on this nicely open board and see what that gives us. Unfortunately, it is all low. So how is black going to reduce this? Everyone should know. Today, everyone is a pro. Oh dear, C9. Uh, let's not go with c9. We will go with d10 on the other hand. d10 is much better. Simple shoulder hit. The opponent is trying to build up a large area of influence off of a low stone. Then it gives you chances. You can shoulder hit, you can cap, sometimes you can even directly attach, but you can harass that low stone force it to defend itself, and thus calmly reduce the area that you were uh, worrying about, as we see here. So this immediately gets flattened, and black gets stronger, or yeah, and black gets stronger as a result. So what do you think about all of this still? Was this a bad idea? Was white better off, given that he's going to immediately get uh, reduced? Is, let's say, uh, your other ideas uh, better? Maybe just expanding here, or just jumping up? I mean, if we're just going to be reduced, what is the value of this? Can anyone tell me? Black has a weak group. Create a weak group. Black is floating. Everyone's hitting on it immediately. Yeah, we're creating this not because we think, oh my god, this is going to give us like so much. Ow, I apologize for those of you watching this video later. That audio is entirely too loud when I pass. I, I deeply apologize. Uh, we're not doing this just because we think that this is going to be nicely developed and all of this is going to turn into territory. We're doing this because he, we're going to get reduced. 
and when we get reduced it's going to create a weak group and the minute it creates a weak group there's so many potential uh, paths for this game to take that we didn't have before because there were no weak groups because nothing was in trouble there was nothing anyone had to worry about it's when people start having to worry about their moves uh, like is this group okay do I have time to expand here those kind of things the the game starts getting interesting and those of you watching on Twitch, I'm sorry I forgot to change the title of the broadcast. Oh well. Alright, so right away this game takes an interesting turn. And now uh, White has Sente. And he is, of course, not going to take Sente and turn around given to his opponent by just taking territory on the left-hand side. No, 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 no. That is entirely too passive, and not a single one of us here would be interested in playing such moves. Instead, we can ask ourselves that wonderful, glorious question, where are the weak groups? And the only answer on the board is right there. Made it easy. One, uh, one positive thing about playing this uh, this particular fashion, is when you ask yourself where are the weak groups, they really get easy to answer. But what do we do with this knowledge? How can we assault this? Do we try to kill? I like killing. Can we cut this? Can we do that? Do we keep extending outwards here? Do we play large on the right hand side, knowing he can't invade us with a weak group on the board still? Do we cap? Frogwood says capping is a bit much. Mizumi8 says I like B. Other people say A looks fun. Unfortunately, A does not work. You can't actually stop your opponent there. And I'll go back and show that in a minute. Alright, so a lot of people are saying D, though B is interesting too. Okay, you're right, white does cap here. I mean, we could do this, and hope that I guess he just jumps out, but probably not going to happen. I mean, even like one more move here, or here, is vastly going to strengthen this group. And at that point, all black has to do is go, well, I know there's an invasion point here. So maybe I can just make my group stronger real quick and then invade the top so you don't actually get that for yourself. You're not going to attack me in that direction so you can profit. But on the other hand, if we're threatening to surround the entire group, uh, well, that's an issue. Because if we work against this stone, let's say for the sake of argument we tried to go this way and white followed just to keep surrounded in, and then maybe that doesn't work out, so we try and run this way, and white continues to follow. Well, what we notice is that white's getting another wall, and we still have a completely open board. No, I did not damage the SGF tree. These are the actual moves that are played. Walls are wonderful things. So black is just trying to run out with his weak group, Uh, but white isn't being passive. He's not... Okay, I don't know how to word this. Must word this one carefully. Um, white isn't just trying to passively develop the board. I mean, right now it would be very, very tempting to say, Okay, you're out. Screw everything else. I'm going to develop here now. But then, to do so, you might actually be forfeiting any kind of attack you were ever going to make on um, Black's group. And White's not quite ready to do that. He plays this. Because this pokes at the problem that, is this really going to get connected? And is there Aji back in the corner? So, we are getting an extra, some more influence. We can possibly develop. But we don't have to let that weak group go just yet. So black, so white says that he's not going to do so. 
Black says, I be connecting up all my things. And immediately White asks, is that really true? Black responds as strong as possible. Make certain that uh, hardly any weak stones are left behind, but that does prevent him from connecting. Now we have an issue. We aren't in fact connected. We're still getting completely surrounded on a level that makes us think we're facing a pro player. Because surely only a pro player would be able to take that attack and use all of his stones working perfectly together to completely surround us in this most frightening way possible. It does look like an S. You see, I was actually going to say it looked like a duck because I was I was seeing like kind of a tail over here, and this kind of uh, upper right kind of being a head from like up in here. But yeah, an S works too. An S works too. Anyway, uh, Black plays the Hane. Maybe I can really connect up. No, we can't. We're going to cut. Yes, if you make cute animal shapes with your stones, you will be a professional. That is my recommendation. Especially in tournament games. I mean, at the very least, uh, if you're playing someone you have no hope of beating, well, if you start making animals on the board, you may not have been able to win against them, but hey, everyone will be entertained. So, clearly we're not connecting up. We need to live still. We would like to reduce the right hand side because this wall now stretches the entire board. So we would like to do something about that, but we can't while we're in trouble. We have no opportunity to do so. And this is the value of having a single, even a single weak group on the board. Because do we expect to kill this? Absolutely not. In this game, I can promise you that White never, ever considered that he'd actually be able to kill this weak group. Because there's only one of them. And I've said many, many times before, when a group knows it is under attack, it's probably not going to die. It probably will not die. So yeah, uh, yep, especially on the pro level, especially on the pro level. If you watch how, uh, what kind of things they can get themselves out of, yeah, they can live in a lot of places that you would think that's unimaginable. If there's only one group on the board that's weak and its only job is to live, don't have to worry about anything else, it'll probably live. So black comes out, and since black played away, and make no mistake, this is playing away, this isn't defend the middle group, this is playing away, white pokes at the shape. It's like you shouldn't have played away. You aren't alive here yet, so you're going to struggle for a very, very long time. Well, black has to protect his strength, his uh, shape rather. White gets to defend. Here we go, playing really small moves, but we have to try not to die. Poke, poke, poke. Surrounds or uh, getting some up some shape. Completely surrounding. There's no possible hope that anything's going to escape from here ever. Black is forced to play really, really disgusting moves in order to live, such as this, which is... Uh, this move is so hard to play. We never, ever want to play a move like this, because this is just giving strength, and it's no other reason than not to die. That is that, that right there is a hard move to play. Can I have an eye, says Black. No, you cannot, says White. Well, then I'm going to connect, says white, black. And I will as well, says white. Can I separate you? 
No, you cannot separate me. Then I will go back and live. Hooray! Now, we were worried about the top. However, Black had absolutely no opportunity to go back and do something about that. And we can see from the shape that Black was forced to make that if any single one of these stones was not played, then Black would be dead. So we can't ask ourselves, oh, but couldn't he just have attacked the top first? No, he, he would have died. And we can see he's just barely got enough room here to live. He had no time to go back and do anything else. So this lets White fix himself. Try to get some profit. Can, oh, Snapples screwed up the tree. Sorry about that. So Black gets to take. And because black gets to took, white gets to extend. All of that glorious influence he built up throughout all the things, he gets to use now. If he was actually playing a single small move, then we would be cursing at this board for a good half an hour. Because we would be so screwed. Black would play a larger move, any kind of larger move that would prevent white from being able to use all of that wonderful influence nicely. In a lot of games, I can guarantee that you guys were also in the exact same position. You had a weak group, you attacked it, you got something, but there was that one small move you didn't really have to play, so you weren't able to use what you got from attacking it. And so you see maybe a board like this, or maybe worse, where they're actually able to reduce this uh, on an even larger scale, and then suddenly we're not able to actually profit from that. And a lot of people then turn around and go, well, what's the point of attacking if he gets to live, I get nothing from it. But no, that wouldn't be the story of the game. The story is you missed that one small move, so you got reduced. One move, one move, so important. Black tries to come in, white profits again. He's not going to try to fight this, there's there's no point. We're not going to be like, okay, I'm just going to try and take my territory up in here now, because usually when I attack things for, you know, the entire board, all I'm looking to do is try to create five points, maybe six or seven. No, we're not trying to do that. We've got this huge, huge area that we can still develop. So right away, that's about as far as I really want to go. I mean, we see black try to poke in, we see white just keep developing easy peasy. And from this board, it's pretty clear to see uh, the story of it. We see the group in the middle that had to live, we obviously see uh, the group surrounding it, and the profit that white's getting. Very, very basic stuff. Anyone can like sit down at this board not having seen any of the previous moves and know what happened. Though if you did see what happened, you would see that we were in a position originally where there were no weak groups. Absolutely no weak groups. And then the question becomes, how do we handle that? Do we just strengthen ourselves like we wanted to do? Like some suggested at uh, C14 or J15? Or since there are no weak groups, let's create an area so freaking large that he has to reduce us and create a weak group. If he doesn't want to create a weak group, we're going to force him to create a weak group. And that's what really caught my eye this game. That is such a really great lesson to learn. Uh, the next game that I have that I want to show, and you'll notice that I did kind of rifle that game, rifle through that game kind of quickly, 
Oh, it's because I've actually got two pretty good games that demonstrate this exact same idea. This idea of, holy crap, there's nothing that's really, really weak, so what the frack do I do? Uh, let's see, in the interest of thinking that I might actually be able to preserve an SGF tree, I'm going to close this board and put up another one, and then we'll see at what move I screw that one up as well. So, switching on over. Set that on my games list. Uh, let's see, KGS. Went black screen for a minute, so those of you either on the stream or watching the video later, don't worry, we are now back. And there we are. Alright, hello again everyone. This time we have a game, a relatively older game. I'm in pretty sure that I've actually gone over this game before. Uh, but who cares, I've... It's a really good one to use for exactly what I want to show. So, oh well. We're just going to look at it again. Uh, yeah, the stream sound quality is... Um, I'm able to encode with a much better audio codec than KGS actually permits. So that's why the sound quality there is, uh, is always better. Alright, so we've got a Kong Ji game. Everyone knows who Kong Ji is. He's a really, really, really good professional player. One of the top players, perhaps arguably the top player in China, depending on your opinions on that. And normal openings. I'm gonna go through this a little bit quickly as well. We've got lovely little enclosure from black, large enclosure, influence oriented, white just reduces that easy peasy as we would normally see. White plays standard Joseki, extends three space because we do not care if we get pincered because we are not afraid of fighting. But black does something weird, he backs off, he's not trying to attack, he's not, he doesn't want to create a weak group, ah, uh, that sucks. So we strengthen ourselves, but thankfully Black decides creating a weak group is a really great idea because we can just sacrifice it and force our opponent to kill off our stone while we get Sente. Not a bad idea. You can see this guy suddenly really it seems to like his territory. And that's what he's going for. Seals himself off so he's all nice and strong, nothing to attack there. So White responds by getting an enclosure for himself. And since we're interested in only the middle game, I'm going to keep going through this kind of quickly. Black approaches. White pincers, because we can actually make uh, use of stuff up here if he changes direction or whatever, because we've got that enclosure waiting for us. So he decides that's a good idea. But black is nice and strong in the bottom, so he decides changing directions is good for him as well. So we play standard Jaseki, just change up a little bit here, get ourselves to the corner. White, knowing the value of Aji, actually plays this move, which some people like to forget. If we omit it, for example, it allows our opponent to do really, really awful things, such as get all of these forcing moves, both for influence and endgame and really, really wonderful things like that. So rather than have all of those annoying things lingering over our head, we can just extend and make certain that they're not really there. Does give Aji to, or not Aji, but Sente to our opponent, so he uses it to, to reduce. Maybe we have a weak group here, maybe, 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 but alas, Black chooses to play this variation. where we're just going to make a little bit of an exchange here. This seems to always catch people by surprise every time I play this Joseki though. Uh, for some reason or another, it's not seen very much nowadays. Uh, it was back when this was played. This was played back in 2008. Um, but yeah, this is, this is actually a pretty normal invasion. 
we take, we take. And the brilliance here is that both players are kind of happy. Black got to reduce, but he's not completely alive yet. White got reduced, but he has something that he can potentially attack a little bit later on. And of course, white can lean on a group as well. So I still like it. I don't know, maybe it's completely uh, been ruled out, like, ooh, this isn't like good for one player or another. I still play it because I like the variation, but you know, that might just be me. Anyway, oh, son of a, I just ruined the tree because I did that. Shoot. Oh, well, went from 72 moves to 40 moves, even sooner. All right. So white moves to surround, black moves to live in corner. Not much we can do here. White decides, or black decides, I'm not leaving this to chance. So now we pretty much have white surrounding, black getting to live, and now the question, where are those freaking weak groups? Unfortunately, uh, they're like the last game, they're, they're not really in high supply, right? What can we do here? I mean, we can invade the bottom, but that makes white weak. And we all saw what happens to the first player who makes that weak group. Can be troublesome. We can invade this. That could be a bit of a weak group. Uh, D7. What's D7? Ah, that's D7. That's funny, Yannick. That's funny. Uh, M17, extend across the top. Indeed. The largest point on the board is to extend. And black doesn't respond with an invasion. He responds nice and calmly. This is going to seal off. Uh, yep, that far. Why that far, though? That's a good question. Uh, let's say black responds with an invasion, right? This is what we want. This is what we get excited to see because the game just got a lot easier because we can look at this move and we can say, do you have the ability to live locally? And we know that it can't, right? It can't make any kind of extension. So it needs to run out. But if it needs to run out, and it's my move, is it ever going to be able to run out? This stone may actually just get killed. And even if it's not killed, even if it lives, let's say it lives somehow, we can see that we're getting influence just from forcing it to live, and we already have that influence in the center. So we're still going to profit. So that game just got really, really easy. Easy peasy. So instead, Black says, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to lightly reduce you, strengthen my invasion there at R14, see if I can cover that up a little bit and be all happy. So that's all nice and strong, so white says, you know what, R14 not really looking like my thing right now. I'm just gonna force you to defend. Black says, I'm gonna cut you first if you don't protect. White protects this way. And then black covers up the invasion. No, now we don't even have that at to poke at. So now what do we do? There's no large points on the board anymore. There are no weak groups on the board anymore. So how do we find our next move? Uh, while you're debating that, Moboy asks, how do you know if L16 is back, scroll up, uh, L uh, cut or R14 invasion is bigger, where's the cut? Ooh, that one. Okay. Uh, or that cut at the... Uh, eh. Okay, that's a good question. Um, the thing is, you can kind of envision your response to the invasion, right? If we invade and we play the diagonal, and we imagine our opponent running out this way, right? He's running into... Let's get rid of these ones. He's running into... This is going to be all black stones. 
So if he's completely enclosed in this, and our corner is strong, is that stone really going to live? Chances are no. That would take a little bit of a miracle. So we're not really worried about that just yet. All right. Uh, so the qu the suggestions we had is ten gen. Congratulations, two for two. Go back and sit in your corner. Um, Mo boys, uh, right? Uh, R fourteen. Okay. G seven is that. All right. Just jump out and extend. Uh, what else did we have here? H6? What is H6? H6 is not that. H6 is that. Okay, same idea. We've got K5, the exact same move as last time. Interesting. Interesting. Did anyone say it? No one said it. Okay. Believe it or not, white plays the Hane to lock black out of the center and potentially kill off some stones. Not only kill off stones, but it also begins the invasion. Because now, if we picture... Oh, I'm sorry. This, someone did get it? Oh, we did get it. I'm sorry, I completely missed you. Congratulations, 10Q. You are promoted to 9Don. Oh, but who got it first? Uh... I saw LR14 from Gillis, M14, um, I'm just going to make believe that the 10Q got it first, sorry. My lecture, my rules. So, Black says, I see what you're doing. You're blocking me out of the middle. So, I am not going to fall for this. I saw the game that was just gone over in the future, and I know how large that middle can get if I am not careful. At the same time, I know the troubles of going in too deeply, because I understand sector lines, and I know that you've got a doozy of a one here. And if I go too deep, like K10, then you're going to surround me and I'm going to die. So instead, I'm going to try to play safe. White says, okay, you can play safe, I'm going to kill your stones. Black says, you can kill my stones, I'm going to keep reducing you. And instantly, here is another way we can profit from all of that influence that we developed. Just forcing our opponent to go back and spend these moves to reduce us? Give us profit. I mean, we have Sente now, repeatedly. Because he felt that the middle was growing too large, and he had to reduce it. So we're profiting. White continues the profit. This corner is pretty well sealed, but it's okay, because we can kill off these stones. Bye-bye, little stones. I'm sorry that I did not actually save you when I had the chance. But hey, you gave us Sente again, so we can keep producing. So screw those stones. But now, once again, how do we handle? How do we handle? White says there's still profit here. And this is where the game really gets interesting. Uh, no worries about K16. No. Ooh, K16 would be so great. That's creating a weak group behind enemy lines again when we're pretty much all strong, right? So if we say K16, we might see a response at, let's say, K14. And that's not... That's not going anywhere. Um, the cut... Yeah, probably not, because we can still extend in Sente, right? We still got that before we respond. And then happy days. 
So white goes and plays here. Black says, I'm not going to just defend myself. I'm going to go on the attack. White says, I'll happily respond to that. Black says, I will happily respond by trying to kill all of your stones. Well, I will kill these stones. Well, that's fine. You can kill those stones because I'm killing these stones. These stones are now dead. And these stones are now dead. Bit of an odd trade there, but it is a trade that was made in Gote for Black, and that is important. Who is getting Sente and who is getting Gote in uh, these little exchanges is vital, because since White has Sente, I mean he didn't like take three stones um, in Gote, right? Which means Black still hasn't gone back and protected these stones in the center, so we can do things things like that. Who sees instantly what we're trying to do here? We are attaching to a weak group. Or, sorry, that's completely false. We are attaching to a strong group. So clearly, what we're not trying to do is kill off L3. So why are we attaching to it? The only possible reason why we could want to uh, attach here and make ourselves stronger and make him stronger is because if we are stronger, we can try to do cool disconnecty kind of deals. And if that gets disconnected, then it's so screwed. Black fearlessly plays the Hane. The move you typically only play when you want to give your opponent more forcing moves to get stronger. Black sa White says, you Hane. Well, okay, let's go fight. I dare you to Atari me. Because if you Atari me here, you're going to be resigning very shortly. Right? Because what are you going to do? You're going to Atari here, and then you're going to Atari here, and now you've just given your opponent a forcing move, and then cut off completely. So go on, bro. Go cut me off. Black says, that's okay, I'm going to kill you. White decides that would be a very, very nice trick that we want to see. How are you going to kill me? Black says we're going to do it by surrounding you. Now you are going to die. And that looks like he's not lying. Those stones aren't looking healthy. So what do you think? Screw up by white? Or is there Aji here? What do we think? Kongji is fine, but do we have any idea how he's actually fine? Do we have any idea how we can turn this to our position? Because if it was me, I just want to go cry somewhere and then maybe play again after uh, a, a little bit. Maybe sign on to StarCraft, beat up some bronzies, then uh, come on back and try again. Uh, Gillis says we can try and live on the bottom. Okay. Uh, RJM says maybe M3L2K2 and then K5. Where's K5? K5? You don't know. He didn't say K5. Why did, why did I say K5? He said K, yes, and then uh, M5. Ah, M5. Okay. And then J5. All right. He's kind of getting it. He's kind of getting it. Not surprising from a Tudon. He's uh, he's on the right track. We do, in fact, Atari. We are going to descend, but instead of playing more moves down there, because we want that Aji remaining, we're going to go ahead and Hane immediately. White says, I'm not going to try to kill you. Or, no. Black says, I'm not going to immediately cut you off and get greedy and, you know, 
I, I see that my stones are in danger. I recognize where the trouble is. I'm not falling for this. White connects. Black connects. We are now at two liberties, people. This is getting dangerous. But now there's even more Aji. But if we did not play this way, then what of these stones? If we had instead played something like here, we still have all of the problems that this still provides, along with the all of the joy and excitement of knowing that those two stones are not alive. So he has to reduce a liberty. We Atari, connect, Ata uh, semi Atari, as my one of my students used to say. And I can never get that out of my head. That is a go term for me now, the semi Atari. It's when you actually bring a stone down to two liberties. Yes. I, I don't know how that's stuck in my head for so long. But I can't get it out. So we do not like being in semi-Atari, so we decide to save our stones. Which opens up this to a cut, and you can all see where this is going. He tried to hold on to everything, he tried his best to kill. But those stones are now cut off. And because those stones are cut off, that is an insane amount of area that we've just given. Now the question is, have we given up too much? So we go back and look, and we go back and look, and we can see if we do nothing, that this fourth line to the third line is mostly going to be blacks. We could advance forward. We see the fourth line and the third line are still blacks, but we gave in a little bit more, a little bit more, to get to completely cut him off from everything in the center. That uh, carefully weighed, that seems like a good exchange. Um, to Black's credit, he is a pro, so he's not going to just resign. He's going to try to live, clearly. He's got stones already in the middle, so we're going to go after the Aji, and then we're going to see if we can do something. If he gets to do something, then he might still win the game. And that would be good. So White's responding nice and strong. Black's trying to uh, see if he can come in. Creating lovely little cut points. Maybe we can use them later. Uh, Atari. Force him into a bad shape. That's something. Maybe surround and kill those stones. That'd be worth it. That'd be good. But white knows that this isn't going to die. Black moves to surround. That emphasizes the problem quite lovely. So we cut off. Because we are looking for things to do. White plays pretty strong. Trying to... Uh, respond in a way that removes the Aji uh, that's there, keeping him out of the top. And here we can see that he has to respond, or he's going to lose his stones. So that's Atari, that's Atari, that's Connect. And then White plays away. He's like, you're dead on the left, I don't have to do anything there. Leave my game, sir. Black says, no. I'm going to make some shape. Black or white descends. Black gets to connect. We're removing happy little eye shapes. We're using up all the Aji. Because we're not dead until we're dead. Connecting. Going to Hane. And at this point. Looks dangerous, but it is not because we have an eye. So there's nothing more we can do. 
So black resigns. So in this game, we actually saw two very interesting ways that white managed to handle this game where there was really nothing weak. He, like the previous game, he did manage to build up quite a bit, so much so that he was playing what many of us would consider very, very risky uh, moves, right? He's like, uh, before all of this happened, before he decides to even try and use his influence, he just decides, I'm going to play this Hane, because I know that you have a lot to worry about. You have to worry about my invading now. You have to worry about my reducing now. And the fact that you have to worry about this means I'm profiting. Even if I don't see it right on the board, clear as day just yet, I know it's going to happen. Black reduces. So white said, there you go, there's my profit. And he keeps profiting while black keeps reducing him. And as long as he didn't uh, make this little uh, tiny exchange here that we see there in Gote, he even gets back, gets a chance to go back and address these two stones in the center. See if we can't cut them off. And how did he do it? By attaching to the third line stone. That third line is can be such an annoying stone to have a, to uh, be placed. I mean, we know third line can be shoulder hit. We know it can be attached as we saw here, can be capped. A lot of different things and a lot of different reductions, a lot of different attacks tends to start on that third line stone. L8 is the move, yeah. L8 is priming so much. So that was our focus today. Just looking to see what you can do when there are no weak groups to attack. That doesn't mean that the game is over, we're going to go into endgame. Uh, doesn't mean you just have to take some gote move that's not even very large, it's just like the only thing on the board. There are other options for you. So I hope you enjoyed these two games, which were, in my opinion, really great examples of them, and I love going over... This is a game that actually uh, is in my favorites list, and I go over it from time to time just to kind of have that little reminder. Uh, I advise you guys do as well. It's really, really cool. And I will see you all week after next, as per usual. Yep. Take care, everyone.